Hi, Carol. Hey, Daniel. We're here at MEF Forum in Orlando, Florida. Yes. And the big news of this show this year, they've released a new uh, set of specifications, MEF 3.0, which covers more ground than it had in the past. Much more. Can you give us a little background on that? Sure. So MEF, of course, grew out of the Carrier Ethernet world, and they're used to doing Carrier Ethernet standards and Carrier Ethernet certification. Um, but now they're expanding both into a broader set of services and into more of an overall view on how you tie all those services together and how you also orchestrate those services. We've been focused on Carrier Ethernet. It's an $80 billion market growing to $100 billion. The problem is with connectivity is it'll continue to rise, it'll be a ton of opportunity, but it go, it'll continue to commoditize. If you stay in the connectivity game only, you know, while your business will continue to increase, your margins will drop. Right. So there's a couple aspects to that. One is they're going to be developing service definitions for things like SD-WAN, security as a service, but also wavelength service. New revenue opportunities like security as a service is really important. So you supply the bandwidth, but then you add this bump in the wire service. They're also going to be, as part of another initiative they started a couple of years ago called Lifecycle Service Orchestration, they're developing applications programming interfaces that let service providers connect both internally, their systems internally, and also connect to each other. I feel like in a lot of ways, uh, the, uh, the announcements around MEF 3.0 were really designed for people like me um, who are in the business of uh, exchanging services between um, large carriers, large service providers. The, what's very, very exciting about the MEF 3.0 vision is, is, is the fact that it covers how services integrate. It reflects the realities of you know, the need to connect cloud to cloud-based services. It reflects right. the importance of security. So very, very excited about that. And the beauty of all that, where MEF really, really cut its teeth and earned its credibility, was in enabling this carrier-to-carrier -carrier connection to be a seamless connection so you could do end-to-end -end services. That's a much more valuable market proposition for all the service providers. While you were here, you spoke to Josh Goodell from AT&T about the Intelligent Edge. What is that? Josh is focused on the Intelligent Edge at the customer premises um, with something they call Flexware. And what that is is actually putting um, a white box with the, network, with the intelligence built into it at the edge of the network. Um, and you can do a lot of different services there, and that's, that's one of the things they're working on. So Flexware, if we think of the natural evolution, we've gone from physical to virtual on the premise, and then virtual to intelligent. And I'd say right now, you know, the, the last stage has been getting to virtual, which is what we all know Flexware has been, and we've been in the market for about 12 months. This fits into the broader notion of, of the fact that the edge of the network itself is becoming much smarter. You're going to see much more compute power, much more bandwidth delivered there, because increasingly you're going to, the, the cloud is, is going to be distributed. It's not going to be sitting in some data center exclusively. Um, a lot of people here are still talking about SD-WAN. What's new in that area? Well, SD-WAN, although it seems like it's been a hyped topic for a while, it's actually the services are just starting to roll out. So what we're seeing is a lot more um, advanced services beginning to be developed. Charter announced one here. They're doing cloud-based SD-WAN with Nuage, and they're using it actually to extend the reach of their services outside their regional footprint. Um, Verizon is talking, they're doing a wholesale version of SD-WAN. SD-WAN is a technology that we obviously at Verizon have put a lot of, uh, a lot of energy into. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of deployments out there at this stage and we're using it in different parts of our business. So, you know, we're using it in the enterprise segment, very, very, you know, marketing it as a service itself, right? right. SD-WAN delivers a lot of value to the enterprise. So when you talk about what's down the road, can you give us any peeks at what might be coming? I think, you know, policy-based intelligence at an application level. And so if you think about traditional SD-WAN, that's core to that value proposition. Right. And so Flexware will evolve to be an enabler of our network-based SD-WAN capabilities, which will be commercially available in the first quarter of 2018. It seems like the technology is moving along. There's still something that needs to be addressed, and that's the people and the culture. Can you speak about that a little bit? You know, it, invariably, when I, when I ask that question, one of my favorite questions, what's the biggest challenge? Everybody says people, everybody says culture. The problem is that, that people don't change as fast as technology does. We're used to working in a certain way, and when you dramatically change that, it causes problems. And also cultures, the way the, the telecom culture has been, very siloed, people have kind of stuck to their little project, and now they're being asked to think broader and to work in what's called DevOps teams, where you bring the developers and the operations teams together and they work um, progressively on something. People have to also learn, this is one of the big hard lessons for telecom. You don't have to get, test something to death and get it perfect. You can put it out there, see how it goes, improve it, and if it doesn't work, you know, shut it down. 
it's a very different attitude, very different approach, and that kind of dramatic change is hard. All right, well, Carol, thanks so much. Sure.